two days ago, Triff Gaming had 22,000 subscribers. Today, we have 24,500. Thank you all for all your support. As I promised, at 24,000, we're going to release an amazing Zephyr video. Hence, get ready for the greatest, most incrediblest, seven negate Zephyr profile of all time. Who's ready? With that being said, let's hit 25,000, baby. Hit the subscribe button. 25,000, Pendulum Magician. Seven to gate, deck profile. With that being said, let's get straight into the video. Man, I truly have the best fans in the entire world. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. A little 14-year-old puberty sound there, but it's all good. Wonder why it's all good? Because we're playing seven to gate Zephras. Let's go. We're playing like 12 Zephyr cards in here. Ended up drawing zero, but guess what? You're playing the best deck, and the best deck draws infinity times per turn. So let's go cipher through the deck to draw that Oracle of Zephra, or the Zephrath, or whatever it may be. Zephra has many starters, and that's what I do like about Zephras. If you don't draw a starter, you just draw into it with Crowley, Saryusha, whatever it may be, and you get it easily. Now, I want you guys to see what I'm going to do here. I purposely don't blue boy right away. I purposely try and get enough counters on reflection to resolve it to summon the Mighty Master in order to play around Impermanence. Impermanence and Ash are hand traps you should expect in this format. So now that we have the Mighty Master on board, we are protected from Impermanence. You have to think kind of outside the box there. And even if you have Reflection and Servant both in scale, no hand trap is going to work on the Reflection uh, Ash doesn't work on Reflection. Ogre, it leaves a scale, so you can still use Servant. So you don't lock yourself out there. Now we're going to activate the Blue Boy. And the goal here is to draw into a Zephra card. Because Zephras have a bunch of one-card starters. We have like seven, eight, nine one-card starters in the deck. And what happens? So we get Knowledge here, get counters everywhere. And hey, what do you know? We draw into it. That's the beauty of it. Now, as you see, there is a Cerberus in the hand. So you want to utilize... It's part of playing pendulums. You want to get the most advantage possible. There's little plays you got to do here and there to get the most advantage. It's how I top the event playing the old format. Little plays. Little plays like summoning the Mighty Master first. It's how you play around hand traps. Now, if they ash the knowledge, you still have enough counters on the servant to resolve the servant. Regardless of ash or not. So even through ash, you're still putting up a bunch of negates. Now... The next play here, another smart smart play. You want to resolve the Servant to get it out of the scale to get Cerberus effect to resolve and the Institution to resolve by adding counters from both the Cerberus and the Jackal getting free counters on the Institution. So we're going to activate the Servant now and on top of that, you do want to protect yourself from the Jackal. So our goal here is to put up as big of a board as possible while protected from Nibiru with the Jackal and keeping in mind that Zephra, you cannot Pendulum Summon Mighty Masters with Zephrath because Zephrath scale will be scale 7 because you're sending Zephyr Nui. So you cannot even link away the Mighty Master. So you have to be really play really smart around that. So here we're going to do is add as many counters as possible on the field because our goal here is to put up a big, as big of a board as possible without linking away the Mighty Master or the Jackal because Jackal, we need one Jackal up there for to stop the Buru and one Mighty Master cannot be summoned back. So we're going to go through the motions, get as many counters on as possible. We're going to Zephyrath first. The goal, you cannot add Servant anymore at Institution. You could add Abductor if you want, but I opt to get the Reflection here. Maybe Abductor would have been a better add, but we get the Reflection. We're going to put the Reflection in the scale, and we're going to link these into Daybreaker. Now, the reason we chose Daybreaker here, it's a better card. You're going to have Masquerade on board anyways, right? It's better to have a Daybreaker on board to get two free counters and when it survives, because your opponent is going to deal with five negates, right? So the worst, the least of your opponent's worries is dealing with a Daybreaker. So I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to get back a Daybreaker in a second here, but we added Reflection with Institution. Now we're going to Pendulum Summon the Jackal and the Zephyr, uh, Zephyr Nui. Now, Zephyr Nui is a cool trigger, getting Providence, which will then get us Divine Strike. For all the people like to comment, Dark Ruler likes to know your location. Yeah, nice Dark Ruler. This is only game one, but in game two, you still get cocked by the best deck. Now, Daybreaker's effects couldn't resolve. I didn't counter on it because a card was Pendulum Summoned to its thing. And this is why you don't mask Reina right away in this situation, because you must link off the Zephyr Nui in order to be able to use Divine Strike. So we're linking away the Reflection and 
the Zephyr Nui into the Masquerina. To go into a Masquerina and to be able to use the Divine Strike. Now if you look at this board, you have a Negate from the Divine Strike. You have Double Jackal, that's 3. This is Mighty Master, 4. And Masquerina into an Appaloosa for 4. So that's 8 Negates. But we'll call it... We'll call, Appaloosa is at least resolving twice. They're at least, at the very least, because 3200 attack. So that's 6 Negates, 7 Negates, whatever you want to call it. And Masquerina can really go into anything if you want. And then, as I talked about Daybreaker in the beginning, is the opponent, the least of your opponent's worries is Daybreaker. They have 6 cards in hand. You have 6 Negates. They're going to end on, even if they're lucky, they're going to somehow clear half of it. The least of their worries is the Daybreaker. So now, Daybreaker is going to pop a free card, and then you're going to have two free cards to summon under its zones. So it's very good to have a free Daybreaker if you can. Obviously, not all hands could do it, but it's a free Daybreaker sitting there. That way, after you pen summon on your following turn, you're going to have two free slots to pen summon to, where the Jackal and the Zephyr, uh, Zephyr Nui is going to summon to get free negates, and then you destroy your opponent again. So this is the combo tutorial for a typical hand, and now we're going to go into the deck profile. So we've got Servant Triple Abductor. We got two, uh, three Reflection here. I love Reflection as a card. As you saw the use of it, it as a card, a lot of you might not like it because you don't use it correctly. In a deck that has a bunch of spells in like this deck, it, Reflection is incredible. I absolutely love Reflection in this deck. One Magister. Why? It can clog your hand. A lot of the time, the Zephyroth is going to be the high scale because it's going to be sending the Zephyr Nui. So the Magister is kind of dead a lot of the times. One is all you need. Sometimes you do want to get it. Always, like in this deck, play one. Don't play more than that. Zephyroth is the high scale most of the time. Triple Mighty Master, as always. Yeah, a bunch of counters everywhere. A bunch of spell cards to put counters on cards. Mighty Master is resolving all the time. Triple Cerberus, Double Jackal, one baby jackal. I like this ratio. I'm even debating. I cut Bashilis from the deck in all versions of it. I'm not a fan of Bashilis anymore. It could break you sometimes. There's no reason for it. And Garuda in the side deck. I don't like Garuda as a hand trap because a lot of the times the Garuda could just be another jackal. So you are losing out for the hand trap. You just get another jackal anyways. What's the point of playing a brick? It is only good against back row decks for its back row removal effect. Not so much a hand trap effect. Uh, and you don't want it to break. The, the Zephyr account is double Zephyrath, three Oracle of Zephyrath, because two Oracle of Zephyrath terraforming, double Providence, one Zephyr Nui, one Zephyr Wendy. If you notice here, I don't play the low scale ones, which a lot of you like to play the, the Satellite scale one. I'm not a fan of it simply because it just bricks more. I'm trying to play the most consistent list possible. And a majority of the time, your low scale, uh, you already have the low scales with because you play so many. But if you don't have access to them, you just don't use Zephyrath's effect. So you just have a low skill in Zephyroth. Scale 5 is a low skill in this deck. You're pen summoning Jackals and Mighty Masters Zephyr Nui. So if you really need a low skill, you have Zephyroth for that. You just don't use its effect. So I prefer just to keep the high scale and keep it as consistent as possible. One Magician Soul. Why? It is searchable by Abductor. If you notice that you have a bunch of spell cards, hint, hint, Field Spell, Oracle of Zephyroth, extra Zephyroth cards, extra spell book cards, hence why you play a little bigger of an engine, and an extra Institution, Magician Soul becomes broken. Now, for those players that are on a budget, you don't need Magician Soul. It is not mandatory, but it is definitely nice to have as a one of because it is searchable by Abductor. You normal Abductor, you easily resolve Abductor's effect by activating two skills and a field spell. You get the Magician Soul, you special the Magician Soul by sending a Cerberus, and then you resolve Magician Soul by sending the Institution and the Zephra, the Oracle of Zephra, literally getting a free draw too. It literally, Abductor becomes Pot of Greed with a free card. And then it's not even over after that. Because then the Abductor and the Magician's Soul then turn into Crowley. So you don't just get a free Pot of Greed, you get two free Pot of Greeds. So after you normal the Abductor, normal Abductor says draw four. Yeah, th that's how insane it is. But only when you have the free spells. So imagine when you have the Oracle of Zephyra and like the Institution. Or like extra, so the Oracle of Zephyra and then Zephyr Pop. It turns into like draw four, discard one. Which is absolutely insane. Because, like I said, Soul, draw two, and then Abductor and Soul go into Crowley to get Blue Boy and draw two more. Uh, it'll Secrets of Knowledge. It'll be a 67% draw four if you draw Secrets of Knowledge, and it's, it's insane, man. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, two Blue Boy, two Secrets of Knowledge. But again, I would only recommend Souls and Pendulum decks that have field spells or lots of continuous spells or something like that. I don't recommend it for decks that don't have many of those because then you don't plus as much. Only for decks that have built-in field spells. 
like the Zephyr Providence got you the field spell. So you, the whole bottom nine, you have like nine cards here. That's it's a free plus one for you to draw. Triple mastery, triple institution broken in this deck because you have so many spell counters to add on your spell Endymion cards. So the synergy of Endymion and Zephyr is obviously very good because you get to resolve institution as well, like Mythical Beast as well. So one Citadel, just in case, but a lot of times you're using it to get Zephyr. One tap warming, double Zephyr, double Providence, one Divine Strike. I like it. Maybe you could add one extra Zephyr brick, but I don't like the bricks at all. Uh, triple Severe Mode, double Lava Goal. Oh, you can't play Desires in this deck in case you get rid of, like, Zephyr Nui or Divine Strike. You just lose your Negate. Triple Severe, double Lava Golem. I like this versus all the combo decks in this meta. Triple Denko, double Evenly, one Reboot. Garuda said, I'm setting in all these eight versus the backward decks, okay? Now... It destroys Subterra and Guru, even though I do understand... Sorry, Subterra and Altergeist. That I understand that Altergeist have the card that stops Denko and Evenly. Uh, uh, that'll negate it or whatever. But you have so many one-card instant negates in this deck that it doesn't matter at all. I would still play it. And Garuda and Eccentric don't even count as back row hate. So if you have Triple Denko, Double Evenly, and Red Reboot in your deck, how are you losing? You're not losing. You period. Period. You ain't losing. Uh, might be a little too much, but it's good to have options. And against Orcus in this format... I play Triple Denko and one Red Reboot. Why? It absolutely obliterates Orcus right now. The Orcus engine gives you Crescendo Pass. That's your negates. But I'm not scared of that. I'm scared of the traps that they play now. Eradicator is coming in every Orcus deck moving forward. So now with Denko and Reboot, you have the Eradicator. And no smart person is going to do it right off the bat. They're going to wait for you to activate scales. And then they're going to uh, wipe you out with uh, Eradicator. But since you have Denko, you're good through Orcus. And he cited Gruden and Centric almost every time going second. And Double Village for going first. Not that you need, but it just free wins. Crowley, Mascarena, Alistair Invoker, Daybreaker. As you saw, Daybreaker comes up. I'm because of Crowley. They come up a lot. I'm telling you guys. Especially to link away the Zephyr Nui when you can with Mascarena. Alistair comes up for times where you have to normal summon the Abductor. And now you want to link away into a random spellcaster with, like, let's say a Zephyr Nui card. So you go like Zephyr or whatever it may be. Uh, like... I don't know, a random servant and the Zephyr Nui go into the Alistair to then be able to secret and all uh, use Spellbook of Secrets or the Spellbook of Knowledge on the Alistair. You want generic link to Spellcaster. So it does come up because there are like Zephyrs, ra like, random, uh, different, sp not that aren't Spellcasters. Uh, one ten, uh, link three, once Ayusha comes up a lot, Appaloosa, I had a Nightmare Cerberus. This format, there are more special summon monsters that Cerberus comes up for. Like against Pendulum, against uh, Spiral, that you're going to see a lot. So, and there's lots of space in this extra deck. So, Cerberus, Phoenix, Unicorn, Boral Sword, Boral Load, Dweller, Vortex, and Absolute. The deck's amazing. I really like it. If you guys got this far, smash the subscribe button, hit the like button. And at 25,000, we're going to be releasing a Pendulum Magician deck profile. If you like the video, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!